Well hi guys and welcome back to Trev's Travels Cooking on a Narrow Boat. I'm continuing the theme today with British classics and the classic we have today is Shepherd's Pie. Not to be confused with Cottage Pie. Shepherd's Pie uses ground lamb. Cottage Pie uses ground beef. Now I spent quite a lot of time in America as a lot of you probably know and for some reason over there there's a lot of confusion you go into an Irish pub and they will say they have shepherd's pie on the menu they don't they have cottage pie on the menu it's made with ground beef and not ground lamb and of course they also say it's traditional Irish and of course it's traditional English if you want to stick around to the end of the video you may recall in the past video, I attempted to make a sawhorse, which went, shall we say, somewhat wrong. But I put the old thinking cap back on and uh, thought about it a bit, and I made some modifications to it. And if you want to see those modifications and how it came out, whether it ended up by being firewood or a usable tool, stick around to the end anyway it's time to get on with cooking shepherd's pie and i'll first of all go through the ingredients with you we first of all of course have our ground lamb which is 500 grams just over a pound i have one medium to large onion diced up I have two carrots I've grated and a lot of people might put in peas I didn't have any peas but I did have some green beans left over from a stir fry I made yesterday so I've diced up quite small 100 grams of green beans for flavorings we have some tomato paste, some dried mixed herbs, Italian seasoning, if you're in America, about a quarter of a teaspoonful of freshly ground black pepper, similar salt and similar garlic granules. Some Worcestershire sauce, and we added salt and pepper. For the topping, I have five medium to large potatoes I've diced up, ready to cook to make the mash with, which I will be adding salt to to cook. Now here comes my twist on it, of course. Traditional mashed potato it should be. Well, Trevor's gonna add about two ounces of grated or shredded cheeses, whichever you want to call it. So here's the time. We're going to pick some of this to go in our mash. And I have a couple of sprigs of fresh thyme I picked from my herbs, which I'm going to take just the leaves off and add that to the mash. And of course, we will also require some butter to make the mash with. So let's get on with the cooking. So to start off with, we're going to take our ground now. And we're going to put it in our pan and we're going to fry it off and brown it. I forgot to light the gas. While we're cooking that we'll also cook our potatoes. So we'll turn those on as well and we're going to add about a teaspoonful of sea salt and we'll bring those to the boil. This, of course, traditionally was normally made with the leftover roast from a Sunday. So if you had roast lamb for a Sunday, it'd be ground down, and this would be quite a good way of making it into a different dish for Monday. 
This is an 80-20 mix fat and lean. And I deliberately need some fat in it because we will make the roux of that later. Oh, and there's a couple of other things we will be adding to this. There's a couple of the good old Oxo cubes. You may see here that I like to keep the ground meat moving when I'm frying it. This helps to stop it clogging together. I know some people will add water to it when doing this, but I find that just makes the uh, meat go sort of soggy and it draws that water in and just doesn't do it any good. I don't like it done that way. Each their own of course. As you can see here we've got quite a lot of fat coming off. That's okay. Now it's starting to stay fairly separated the uh, piece of the meat and most of it's sort of browning off now. We're going to add the onions. We're also now we're going to add our green beans and our carrots. Which we're going to gently stir in. We're now going to add our other ingredients. Which is the salt, the pepper, the tomato paste, the garlic powder and some mixed herbs. Mixed herbs and garlic powder are completely optional. There are my add to it. We want to make sure that gets mixed in. Now you can get lamb oxo cubes, I believe. I don't have any. So I'm going to use regular beef ones. And we're going to add two oxo cubes. It's just crumbling quite nicely. Once again here, if you can't get OXO cubes and you're using some bouillon cubes which are hard, dissolve them in water first, it makes it a lot easier. But these as you can see crumble up quite nice and easy. So there's my two OXO cubes, which we're going to mix in. Now I like my gravy quite thick in a shepherd's pie or if I'm making a cottage pie just the same. So to do that I'm just going to take my flour sifter here and sift some flour over the top which will Soak up the oil. I'm going to turn the heat down there as well. And I'm going to add enough flour to basically remove the oil. It's still a little bit greasy there, so we'll add some more. So my flour shaker is getting empty. Potatoes are boiling. I'm just going to turn them off. They can continue cooking in their own heat. Quite miraculously off camera the uh, flour shaker got refilled. Around a little bit more. We, do, don't want it, we don't want this dish greasy. Nothing worse than it being greasy. 
you can pour off all the grease and not do this and just make this the separate gravy but I do like to keep all those flavours in it there's a lot of flavour in the fat and we want to include that in our dish and I can still see a little bit here and I'm just going to shake some flour directly onto the bottom there they were looking good Uh, there's still a greasy spot there. Let's uh, cook this for a little bit to cook the flour out a little bit. I'm now going to add my Worcestershire sauce. A few splashes. And I'm also going to now add some water. I did boil that kettle not so long ago, so the water's a little bit hotter. It'll take, you know, it'll, it'll warm through a lot quicker. Meanwhile, I'm now going to light the uh, oven so it's warmed up, ready. have the oven on gas mark 5 I'll put the uh, that in Fahrenheit and Celsius underneath for you need some more water I need quite a bit of water to this because we added quite a bit of flour we want it in a gravy I'm just going to take a little teaspoon now and I'm going to check it for seasoning I think that requires a little bit more black pepper. I like pepper as you probably know. So I'm gonna add small pepper to that. And I think also a touch of salt. Not too much. I'm gonna stir that in and we'll retaste it again in a moment. Give the salt time to dissolve. Add a little bit more water. As I say, I want a gravy, but I don't want it just all runny and sloppy. I want it thick. And that's looking pretty good now. I'll take another clean teaspoon and taste it again. Hmm. That's perfect. Well, the lamb flavour is coming through nicely. So that's basically done. So it, we get the uh, casserole dish. And we're going to put it into there. Try not to make a mess. Also try not to leave too much behind. Waste not, want not, as they say. I don't know who they are. Make sure it's all mixed through and the gravy's fairly evenly through it. Just going to put that to one side while we prepare the mashed potatoes. Right, I'm just going to test our mashed potatoes here. So they're cooked. Yeah. Mmm. Yeah. Yeah, they're cooked. So over here at the sink, where I've already made a mess, dish is already there. We're gonna drain off our potatoes. And just to show I can mash potatoes, we're gonna use the regular masher today. Only because I 
I want to add cheese to this and everything else so and butter and I'll get the butter consistency right for this as I'm adding cheese I didn't want to put the butter through the uh, potato ricer I want to make sure it's not too sloppy as I'm gonna add cheese to it I always find it easiest if you're mashing potatoes to actually mash them first before you add any butter they seem to mash a lot easier they don't sort of squidge around so much like so they look pretty good I can't see any lumps in there at all so we're good now let's put those to one side for a moment I'm gonna add some thyme to my mashed potato which I've just read freshly picked I've only strength my fingers pull the leaves off don't particularly want the stalks lovely thyme this is I can smell this is so fragrant I love thyme it's one of my favorite herbs so there's a little bits of stalk there in places so it's not lumpy I'm just gonna quickly chop those up into small pieces we want the flavor of the mashed potato we don't particularly want to be chewing on pieces of the thyme when we eat it so there we go and that goes in I want to make sure that thyme is fairly well spread through the mashed potato so we're gonna just take a fork quickly and just make sure it's all the way through the mashed potato then we're gonna get some butter Got a little knob left there on that pack so we're gonna use that up at the way throw in there quick I do have another pack there, we'll see how this goes. I don't want the mashed potatoes sloppy. I want to hold its shape on the top and not sort of go all mash, mushy and yucky. We want a little bit more butter to that. Some less and more butter. should do I did leave the butter out of the fridge for a little while to make sure it's a little softer and making it easier to mix so it melts in the potatoes a little bit easier that I'm liking the look of it's gonna taste it oh yeah that's good now I'm gonna take my cheese I'm gonna add the cheese Just gonna fork that through. This is extra mature cheddar, good old English cheese. Cheddar cheese, of course, originates from the town of Cheddar, quite well known for its gorge. Cheddar gorge, that is, where there's uh, cheddar caves, where there have been found remains of ancient civilizations in the caves I think even Neanderthal man was found in one of the caves down there it's uh, melted the cheese into it quite nicely now to bring back in our casserole dish and we're just gonna place the butter place the butter we're just gonna place the mashed potato on the top trying to sort of float it on the top rather than push it in you may notice this doesn't come up to the top of the dish. That was quite on purpose. I used the dish bigger. It will bubble up when it cooks. And you don't want it all over your oven. So if it bubbles up, it will just soak up in the potatoes, which will make them extra scrummy, rather than being all over your oven. I'm just gonna grab a spoon to get the last bit out. Go. and I'm just gonna lightly fork it in and I'm gonna leave it very rough I don't want it all smooth I want to try and make some nice crispy bits when it cooks and we're gonna put it in the oven 
So now we're going to put it in the oven. So it's on gas mark five. And I think it's going to take 35 to 40 minutes. But we'll check it after 35. So here we go, into the oven it goes. So if you've stayed around this long, I guess it's to see what happened to the sawhorse. Let's take a look. So here we have it. Still wobbly when it's knocked together, as you can see here. Let's see what happens when we put it into the table. Tighten it up. Turn it up the other way. Got a bit wide enough. Designed it just sits down on the on these pieces on the clamps up. I'll put up nice and tight. Hey presto, solid as a rock. Now I guess you want to see me saw something on it. I never thought of that sawed up all my firewood yesterday with it and then I painted it afterwards just to sort of make it look a, a little bit different let's hit the saw So here it goes, look, sawhorse. Sit in there. It's not very good doing it on the boat, so I should be doing this out on the towpath, really. As you can see, it's working. Voila. I'm not going to make any more dust on my uh, deck to sweep up, so I'll leave it there. As you can see, very useful tool now. Well, I hope, as you can see there, it's now a very useful tool. It's very useful for sawing up firewood, it holds it nice and steady. So now we're going to go back in into the kitchen and it's time to taste the shepherd's pie. Oh, I'm looking forward to this one. So, without further ado, let's cross over to the kitchen. Well, there you guys are. I wonder where you've been. Well, the time has come to take it out of the oven. So let's see what we've got. It's actually been in there 45 minutes. So let's see what's happened. Oh, it's hot. I'll open the. Oh, oh. Oh. So there it is. As you can see it's bubbled up around the side that was seeped into that mashed potato. Oh, it looks good, doesn't it? That looks good. Let's find a plate. So let's dish some of this up. Nice bit of crispiness to the top of the potato. It might have gone a bit crispier if I'd left it a bit longer. Doing this. I'll just look at that. 
Look at me making a mess here on my plate. Clean up quickly. So there we have it. So one fork. Try and get a bit of everything. Here goes. Well, I've never made it that way before. It was new for me as well as you. That is, well, guess I've done it again. And I've chosen to go with it. Tesco's Pear Cider. Four cans for £2.20. So I'm thinking, nice and light and refreshing. Should wash it down a treat. That does complement it. That just leaves me to say, I hope you've enjoyed this cooking episode. I know a lot of you don't like my cooking episodes. Every time I seem to do a cooking episode, I lose three or four subscribers. But also I know there's a lot of you out there that do enjoy them. So I'm gonna to continue to bring them to those people that do enjoy them. And if you don't enjoy them, just remember, Wednesdays are cooking or something odd. Could be off the cut during the summer months. During the winter months, it's probably going to be cooking or something similar. Saturdays, I still have a little bit of cruising footage to put together. So at the moment, next week, I hope to have you a cruising video again. As long as I don't lose my electric like I did last week. So, thank you for following me along. If you don't know, there's a poll going on at the moment on my community page. Please vote whether you want me to continue doing English classic dishes with my twist. Move on to some soups, winter sort of hearty soups. No gazpacho or anything like that. Or spicy food, where I do Indian, Mexican, Thai, something of that nature. So there's a, no, some of these in it. I don't know if the camera's quite picking that up here. I brought my peppers in from outside and they're still growing as you can see and there's even more flowers on them so all I need now is some bees in here to fertilize the flowers I guess oh well they're still alive so that just leaves me to say and I must say this because one of my patreons his son loves this bit Thank you very much for watching, Trevor out.